Well, on out to the latest in the investigation into some law enforcement officials in Minnesota. They were accused of offering people, mostly activists with the Occupy Wall Street movement in Minneapolis, they were accused of offering them drugs. Now, those officers apparently wanted to study the effects of drugs as part of the Drug Recognition Evaluator Program. Well, it all came out in a documentary released last week, and I want to take a look at a clip from it. They come into downtown, Nick. They pick up yes, people. Pick up random people on the street, asking about the drug evaluation. So they're getting the sheriff's getting Don't people to do it. drugs and then dropping them off back here at PD Plaza. Yeah. They give you food or they'll do they cigarettes okay. or you know I they'll. You they'll give you the drugs for free. I interview you about this. You, your face. You, are you talking about the two cops? Not necessarily, but yes. No, we were just, yeah. They give it to you just to use. You do it in front of them and that's it. They asked me what my drug of choice was. I said weed. And then they're like, okay, what? Uh, well, people, one of them told me I'm looking for something more harder, someone to do mental health or something like that. Uh, now, obviously, some of those people involved uh, were not showing their faces in this. Um, but as a result, one state trooper has been put on paid leave. The DRE program has been suspended and a full investigation now underway. Now, one of the filmmakers who helped expose what's going on in Minnesota is Dan Fight, a journalist and Occupy Wall Street activist. Dan, thanks for returning to the show. Uh, I guess I want to get your reaction on what your film has led to. Uh, well, essentially, uh you know, we, we kind of think that one thing that may have happened was that an officer in a rural town called Hutchinson was, uh, you know, encouraged to step forward and talk to his police chief about seeing a state trooper handing out marijuana to DRE subjects. And as soon as that happened, there, his police chief talked to the, uh, you know, the state level Department of Public Safety. They started having an official investigation. They had to announce it. And that finally got uh, the local media uh, rolling on the whole thing. And then our, uh, you know, local daily, the Star Tribune, came and said, basically took credit for getting, you know, one of the troopers suspended because they had uh, found out a trooper's name from one of the DRE participants. So all these things have really started rolling. Uh, the program's been suspended. And it was really uh, cool to see that uh, people involved with Occupy and, you know, kind of related activist movements around town are really uh, pushing things forward. Uh, labor unions and others were occupying two intersections along Nicollet Mall, uh, you know, late last week. And when the cops were coming in with paddy wagons saying, we're going to arrest y'all. Everybody just started chanting DRE, and the Minneapolis police backed off. The, the mayor of Minneapolis, R.T. Ryback, didn't show up at the uh, May Day parade uh, this weekend, which he usually does. And so it seems like the mayor is really feeling the heat and kind of laying low out of this program. And they're, you know, they're trying to spin what happened. They're trying to blame it on a couple rogue officers. And they're still not addressing the, the ethical issues, uh, the medical safety issues, all those other things. They're just trying to, you know, peg it on a couple people and hope everybody keeps moving on. Wow. So a little tough for some of those police to point their fingers at the uh, Occupy activists uh, when, you know, their department now has the stain uh, of this DRE program. Uh, but let me ask you, I mean, some of the people uh, seem to think that the officers involved were from out of state. Uh, what have you heard? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the officers that were involved uh, were rural officers. Uh, the uh, state patrol officer, I believe, that was suspended was someone who is uh, stationed out state in the state patrol and that kind of thing. So this was a statewide program. But also, the Minneapolis, the, the mayor and the police are trying to distance themselves as much from the program as possible. But if you look at our video, you can clearly see a uh, Minneapolis Police Department cruiser leaving with one of the sort of country uh, sheriff cruisers. So the Minneapolis police were involved, but it, it was a statewide program. And and uh, now they're just trying to hang it on a couple people. Well, we should mention, I mean, this is a program that has been going on, I think, since the early 90s. Um, and the point of it, though, it is really to help officers really understand the effects of drugs, uh, to do so and to learn about it in a controlled setting. Uh, we have a whole lot of people who, who watch our program that say, you know what, uh, it, it's too bad this had to stop going on because some of these uh, people, they were getting free marijuana. Uh, the police were learning their lessons. Why is this a bad thing? Um, well, I mean, one thing to be certainly be concerned about, uh, one of the mothers of the DRE participants said, you know, was this laced with something, right? Like, if they've already admitted that they're handing it out, did they ever check the purity? That doesn't seem too likely. So people are, you know, in danger if they're being given contaminated drugs. But again, also, like, there's the ethical level. You can't encourage people to be taking any drugs. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the investigation 
uh, that the state is having is like they're trying to keep it pretty well contained. But I think that uh, it's starting to really prompt discussion about the war on drugs. Uh, the DRE program in Maryland uh, was basically found to not really produce accurate results. Uh, we're starting to find other examples in the state where false positives in DRE, uh, you know, uh, examinations have been, you know, found to be false. Like they weren't validated. So the actual accuracy of the program, I think, is actually uh, moving more into question as well as uh, obviously these unethical practices. Well, and Dan, we should also mention, I know that I had you on um, last week when this video sort of uh, hit the, the YouTube airwaves. Uh, it's not just sort of having these activists be, you know, test subjects for the police. Uh, there was also an exchange of information that these police were trying to get at, some of them trying to say, hey, I'll give you more weed if you tell me what's going on and Occupy, if you sell out your friends or, uh, you know, lead us to, to the trouble. Uh, I guess talk a little yeah. bit about that, that aspect um, and, and what these cops are, are alleged to have been trying to do here. Right. Well, uh, essentially, the participants in the program said that they were questioned about act activities in the Occupy, who the leaders were, that kind of thing. And, and since they were heavily intoxicated, uh, you know, at least one of them said that he started talking about it. Uh, so we see that that's the, you know, essentially, as a training program, they're trying to practice how to start getting information out of people, how to start rewarding them to, to, to give information. But also, uh, it's really prompted a lot of questions about other weird incidences that happened across the Occupy movement nationwide starting last year. Where in New York, people that had uh, very extreme mental health issues were intentionally concentrated in Zuccotti Park by the police. Uh, you know, stories about you know St. Louis, Texas, etc. Um, so, so the DRE is only one aspect of uh, more troubling kind of police management strategies that were tried uh, through the whole uh, you know arc of this movement. And, and I think that at least uh, this has helped uh, sort of force everybody to readdress that stuff, to look carefully at it, to kind of reparse everything and see what happened in their own areas. And and like. Likewise, I'm, I'm, you know, hoping to encourage everyone, you too can expose things like this if you record what the police are doing very carefully, get your friends to, you know, tell everybody, get these videos taken, because the type of shadiness that was portrayed in the, in the, in the video, uh, I think everybody can relate to that. A lot of people have experienced shady things in the war on drugs, but until you start documenting them, it's harder to get traction. Yeah, and more and more people now have the power to document them uh, with, you know, the video cameras we all have on our cell phones now. Appreciate you coming on the show. Dan Fight journalist and Occupy Wall Street activist. Thank you.